What's up you guys, it's Random from Blaze Tech and in today's video we're going to be going over why I made the switch to Apple products from a Windows perspective as you can see in the corner and from originally Samsung phones aging from the I believe A60 I believe and then I got the S10, S20 and eventually I made the switch I believe in 20. 19 so my first phone i got i believe when i was probably 20 21 so i spent eight years using samsung phones and pretty much my whole life using windows computers then after eight years of a samsung phone i decided to make a switch to a apple iphone because i wanted to try it out as well as eventually after i got a apple iphone i got a macbook so I wanted to try to get into the Apple ecosystem. Why? Pretty much just because I wanted to try it out, see if I like it or I don't like it. So what I'm going to eventually do is a chapter called Cons of the iPhone, comparing it to the Samsung of my specific uses and my specific things that I miss. Now I'm not like a tech geek with all the ins and outs of the Samsungs because I know they're highly, highly customizable compared to the iPhones. However, when I had my Samsung phone, I didn't do it. Why? Because it didn't personally interest me at that time. So I just did the pretty much daily thing or the normal thing everyone uses a Samsung phone for, like all the basics. And then I'm going to list the things that I miss on the iPhone compared to the Samsung phone. And if you haven't already, remember to subscribe to the channel as well as tap the notification bell as well as smash like on this video as it helps for the YouTube algorithm and it pushes my videos out to a bigger audience so eventually this channel can grow. Maybe one day we can hit that thousand subscribers. That's eventually my goal, but more onto the video. So the reason I made the switch to the iPhone, like I said before, was just because I wanted to start to get into the Apple ecosystem. Then eventually I moved on to the MacBook. Now, this wasn't just because I wanted to move more into the Apple ecosystem. It was more a productivity thing. So as you probably know, you can do everything on Windows that you can pretty much do on a Mac, right? But the problem for me is that I really enjoy video games and I really enjoy things like Netflix, YouTube, uh, Stan, uh, and, and any other video streaming platforms. And the games, I literally spend hours and hours and hours a day just wasting my time. Then at the end of the day, I'm like, hmm, I got nothing done. I feel great about today. Today was not a waste at all. But inside I'm like oh damn why did I play a game all day so the main reason why I switched to a MacBook was due to the more limited hardware and the higher end cost comparing it to let's say buying a Windows gaming laptop or something like that for two thousand dollars you can you can play games on the Ambis and that over regular things but on the MacBook let's say if you spent two thousand dollars on a new MacBook Pro or MacBook Air then you can get all the stuff you can do on a Windows computer besides playing games because it's not specified towards that and that for me clicked in my brain and it was something like oh well if I spend two thousand dollars for me that's a lot of money on a new laptop right but however it eliminates me being able to play games because Macs are not built for playing video games and that was where my personal issue came in because whenever I would use my Windows computer I would like do some work let's say I'm scripting a video or I'm filming a video or something like that I would so easily get distracted and just hop on Netflix I know you can do that on a MacBook but this is what I would do I could either hop on Netflix I could hop on Stan I could up on Amazon Prime and watch a few things there or I could just play a game that's already installed on my Windows computer such as like Call of Duty for example I could waste hours and hours either playing like zombies or like survival mode or multiplayer mode and I'd feel great at the time but then I'd regret it at the end of the day so when I got my MacBook Pro, which is the 13-inch 2019 version, you can check out a video up here somewhere. If you haven't already checked that out, I have an unboxing as well as how to fix a particular issue, which I came across when the charger dropped below 50 or 30%, depending on which device you picked up and pretty much how to fix that problem. I personally just got a refund and that fixed my problem. And eventually I want to move on to the MacBook M1 series either the 
MacBook Pros or downgrade a little bit to the MacBook Airs. I'll most likely go with MacBook Pros just because it's a little bit beefier. And the reason I want to do that is because I'm starting to use Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Premiere and Adobe Illustrator. And pretty much I use Adobe Photoshop for all my editing for my thumbnails and stuff like for this channel and other channels I have as well as Adobe Premiere is very very intense on my MacBook Pro and my fans do get very hot like a jet engine and sometimes I'm like ugh that doesn't sound good. I use Illustrator for all my Instagram stuff because it's pretty simple for me but I know that using Adobe Premiere on my MacBook Pro, my computer does struggle a little bit. I am definitely more productive on my MacBook Pro on editing rather than being on my Windows computer doing Adobe Premiere or Photoshop or something like that. I feel way more productive typing on my MacBook Pro compared to typing on my computer where it's got like a mechanical gaming keyboard, it's got a gaming monitor, it's pretty much built for gaming, that's why I first built it and I feel way less productive and I find myself doing less on the Windows computer even if it's the same amount of things if I do it on my MacBook Pro then I eventually feel like I'm being more productive and it's not just feeling more productive I am actually doing more and I also use other things like task managers or to-do lists time doctor like you might see in the background because I am currently using it and for whatever reason it's paused now even though it's not meant to be but it is and eventually I went on to buy a iPad Pro now the reason I bought this it might seem silly to some people but this is me personally now I genuinely enjoy writing on a like pen and paper so I intend to journal every single day or at least I try to do it a few times a week so the problem for me was I liked writing in journals but eventually journals would fill up over time then you would eventually run out of space and you have to go buy a new journal and it was kind of annoying for me so what I did was I went to out and I bought a MacBook Pro and the reason I bought this is because I literally wanted to use things like Good notes and Notion, and I want to be able to carry something around that's about the size of a book and has unlimited storage for either my journaling or I have to take notes on Notion or something like that. And those are literally the two reasons that I bought them. Right now, I don't do things like photo editing or video editing on the iPad Pro. However, if you do eventually want to see a video on that, I'd highly encourage you to comment below and I can definitely give it a shot, give my thoughts and opinions about it and we'll pretty much see how it goes. It'll be a learning thing for me because I've not done it before. However, you know, I might intend to enjoy it. So then eventually after moving more and more into the Apple ecosystem, I realized that there's a few things I actually do miss going from the Samsung phones to the iPhones or a Android device to an iOS device. So the main things I miss are what I use it for and these are my personal problems when it comes to a Samsung phone to an iPhone or an iPhone phone to a Samsung phone. So the main thing was when someone calls you right on a Samsung phone, you either have the choice you can either you can either answer the call or decline the call when your phone is either unlocked or locked, right? However, with the iPhone, if your phone is locked and someone calls you, you only have a choice of answering it or just letting it ring until it ends. And the problem for me is if it's someone I don't particularly want to talk to for whatever reason or I'm busy at that time and I just want to deny their call or call them back later then I just want to deny their call. I don't want to let it ring out then they try to ring me again and again and again because it can get annoying. I have had some people repeatedly try to call me because they want to try and get, get into contact with me and they be like oh he's probably just busy because his phone is ringing out and it's like no I just want to decline your call but I have iPhone so I can't do that however with the iPhone for whatever reason when you have it unlocked when you have it unlocked you have the option to either accept the call or deny the call however I think that's kind of silly because if my phone is locked I should still have the option on the iPhone to either answer it or to decline it or let it ring out don't just give me only one option of either let it like slide to answer or just let it ring out you know apple be innovative let me decline the calls another main feature i miss 
on the iPhone compared to the Android phone is the widget that they have. Specifically, when I used to use Line, I would have a Line set up to a pop-up of the message and who it's from, what they sent, and I have an option to either view the message or I can just reply without having to unlock my phone, go into the app, find that person and type back to them. I could just make a widget and it opens up when I unlock my phone, then I can immediately answer them. However, with iPhone, you have to unlock your phone, see who it was, tap on their name, go into the app, then either scroll and find a person or tap on that person who sent you that message and type to them back. It's a little bit less, I guess, fast, but it's a feature that I do miss and if I could put it on my iPhone, I would. As well as chat features like that, I also use Facebook Messenger a lot. So with Facebook Messenger on the Samsung phones and all the Android phones, you have these little things called chat heads, right? Which is like the little person that comes up in the small dot in the corner of your phone. I miss that feature because I literally use that feature all the time because I could, I believe you could have up to five different chat heads running at the same time or it could be free, don't quote me. And I would use these all the time and those chat heads, they're really easily accessible and you can get rid of them, you can disable them, you have multiple options with those chat heads. But since I used it all the time, I wanted that feature to also be in the iPhone. So when I downloaded Facebook and Facebook Messenger, when I realized that Facebook chat heads wasn't really a thing on iPhones, I was kind of disappointed. However, now I have gotten used to it. However, it is a feature that I do miss on the iPhone that I would like them to integrate it somehow, but I don't think they will. However, I do miss that particular feature of having Facebook chat. Now, as for th other things like widgets and more settings options, I'm not gonna go into detail on this because I didn't look at that when I had my Android or Samsung phones at that time, so I'm not gonna talk about it. However, if you guys got any particular questions about that, I might be able to answer them. Or what I would also like to know is, have you made the switch from either Samsung to iPhone or iPhone to Samsung? And give me your reasons why, as well as what features you do and don't miss changing between the two phones. One more thing that I also miss on the Samsung phones is the fingerprint scanner. I enjoyed the fingerprint scanner, specifically the one that was at the back, I believe, that was the S20 or S10, where you had to have a back of camera and it was just, it was super fast. It would unlock in like probably half a second to a second. But sometimes Face ID, if you're wearing a beanie or if you're wearing a mask, it takes a few seconds. And I know you have got that feature on the iPhone where if you're wearing an Apple Watch, you can glance at the camera and it can unlock with your Apple Watch connected to you due to some sensitivity thing or something like that. However, I have to wear a mask when I go to work and when I want to unlock my iPhone, sometimes it doesn't work and it's a little bit annoying. But yeah, those are pretty much my main reasons why I have switched from a Windows Android ecosystem more to an Apple ecosystem. And these are my reasons. You can comment below if you agree with it or not, or you just think I'm silly and wasting money. It's totally up to you. And what do you prefer? Samsung, Windows, and why and why not? But other than that, this is Brandon for Playstack. I will see you guys in the next video. Remember, if you have not already, smash like on this video, as well as you can check out my socials and make sure to check another video on the channel right here. Bye.